evening so time again time for another video uh this time it's gonna be basically a pike rig video as you can tell by the title um i'm in my man cave my new man cave yeah it's uh semi prepared uh so i've got all my gear in here now lead making boiler making it's just looked like a bombs it at the moment so it needs a bit of a tidy up and then i'll be up and running uh so Plenty of videos there over the winter, uh, leads, baits, tips, tricks, and Andy hints. Yeah. Um, right. So, what's happening now? Well, going pike fishing at the weekend with, I believe it, I believe it not, big carp, camo, Carlosus, colostomy, calamity, Jane, whatever his name is. Yeah, he's got more names than somebody who's got a lot of names. So, going with him up to Sunny Donny, and uh, we're going out to do a bit of a pipe fishing on the water up there. So, uh, I'm going to make some rigs up, because I've got some knocked up, but uh, I'm going to make a few more, because no doubt, Carlos will be scrounging pipe rigs, because not much of a pipe fisherman, so I obviously ain't got much tackle. Uh, so, I'll take my stuff with him, and uh, of course, I'll make a rig tonight. A little rig with a difference, let's say. It's not your bog standard, it's... Uh, it's a rig that I use for three different methods of fishing for pike. So I'm going to get me uh, my pipe bag out, get into the internal man cave, man cave stroke rig making station, which is obviously a room in the house, <laughs> and then uh, we'll crack on with that. So uh, again, yeah, with a view to going uh, up to sunny Doncaster and uh, doing a bit of pike fishing with Carlos. Yeah, Saturday we're not stopping out. The reason we're not stopping out is not because we're fannies and it might be cold, is I can't be arsed loading bivvies and bed chairs and everything into the car. So up there, fishing Saturday, get me head down in Carl's Gaff, up again fishing Sunday. And of course a little bit of video along the way. Right, so get me geared out and uh, to the internal man cave. Right then, so as I said, uh, with this rig, uh, I, I made it, oh bloody hell, must have been a good, oh, good 10, 12 years ago when I was living in Sweden for uh, trolling for pike, basically, in the big lakes they've got over there, yep, obviously in the boat, um, uh, but I use it for other methods as well, so I use it for dead baits. I use it for trolling, uh, float trolling or trolling on the downrigger or any trolling really, uh, and uh, sink and draw, okay, so it's a rig with a difference, uh, but again for the different methods, yeah, if they make fine adjustments, whether you know the size of the hooks, uh, distance between hooks for the different size baits, uh, things like that, and even knock up a few... Uh, few spinner blades on some of them uh, depending on of course how fast I'm trolling so this one I'm gonna make is uh, for dead baits and the reason I make them this way is basically for two reasons one to prevent uh, your bait flying off on the cast um, and two to keep its nose in a straight line if trolling or sink and draw basically Right, so let's have a look at some components. So the components uh, you need, or components you could use, yeah, uh, are of course hooks, trebles, okay, treble hooks, they're size 2, and very, very sharp. Funnily enough, I got these, I got these off eBay from China, and I just got them basically for sticking on... Uh, Sticking on bloody perks and jigs for sea fishing, but the, the hooks are that bloody sharp. I've started to use them for pike fishing as well. So, treble hooks, size two. Yeah, you can use whatever size you like. Of course, you can. Uh, of course, you need some wire trace or that seven strand wire that is 28 pound 30 plus in the manufacturer, of course. Okay, so for dead baits, I use the seven strand. If I'm looking up trolling rigs or the uh, sink and draw, what I'll use is the plastic coated stuff, and I like the Berkeley stuff personally. 
but there's all different kinds that they get out of there. I think there's mustard as well. Yeah, some mustard, that's 15 kilos, that's 30 pound. Yeah, so for trolling in the boat or sink and draw, yeah, I like to use the plastic coated because that kinks easily. Again, when you're trolling, sink and draw, it's getting a lot more hammer. So with this, you just dead bait and you plonk it out and that's it. That's where it stays for however long you leave it in there. But with trolling, it gets hammer. So I like to use uh, the plastic coated. Then, of course, you're going to need some crimps. Okay, donkey, some crimps. I don't know if this is focused. You can't see with that fucking gigs on. Crimps, of course, for the for the uh, right uh, diameter size, the bow size for the uh, for the uh, trace you're using. You can use treble sleeves, but I don't bother with them. Okay. What I like to use is shrink tube for these okay that is just straight out of the electrical shop i don't know what that is whether it's 2.4 3.2 millimeter but as long as it goes over the eye of the hooks or you get one of these that's what you from your pike fishing yeah it's just the old uh, packet work zone shrink tube 127 pieces for less than what you pay for fanny bear asses little bits of that much for three quid Oh, that wasn't even three quid. I think it was at Amazon years ago. Or oh, works on actually. It looks like an Aldi surprise, that doesn't it? It does. Right, other things I'm going to use is, of course, swivels. Just got some swivels and whatnot in there. I'm going to use these black ones here. They've got a nice big eye on them. Yeah. So, swivels of your choice. Yeah. Then, you're going to need, for this rig, you're going to need a single hook. Yeah, so depending on what I am making, if I'm making it for trolling, for trolling big herring or uh, whole mackerel, things like that, I'll stick this single mackerel hook on. Okay, yeah, that's a mackerel hook. If I'm dead baiting, I'll put something smaller on. Yeah, so what I've got here is just some single carp hooks. Good strong ones, because these, the, uh, these are taking the weight of the cast, the, the punch. Yeah, so you want them good and strong, you don't want them cracking off. Okay. And of course, I ain't going anywhere. So they're two different types. Yeah. Again, you can use what you want. Oh, Sean, I see. Yeah, long shank hooks, you know, sea fishing hooks. Don't go paying bloody uh, top dollar for the carp hooks. Just get yourself some bog standard sea hooks. You know, you get about 30 for a quid or something. Yeah. Uh, so that's that. Then I'm going to need some wire cutters. These are just. Nice little cheap and chatty wire cutters, I think they're more from a car boot sale. And these are my, uh, what do you call it, crimps, for the crimps. Yeah, crimping tool. Yeah, that's what I use. Yeah, it's not a crimping tool, but it's what I've used. And I've, I picked that up in Sweden, God, that must have been 10, 15 years ago. Yeah, I've used it, never had any crimps slip whatsoever. The reason I've not had any crimps uh, slip is because I don't catch any fish for them to slip. <laughs> uh, anyway, right, yeah, and this rig does work because I had a £23 pike on it at uh, Instradelchwin in Sweden, yeah, trolling with a herring, yeah, then I smash it up, and that's me, PB, to be perfectly honest. Right, so there is the uh, components for the rig, yeah, so now we're going to basically knock it up, okay. Tip top. Nice cup of tea. Right, so for the dead bait rig, uh, first thing, of course, you're going to need some wire trace. Again, this is the seven strand, the non coated stuff. Uh, again, it's a dead bait, so I only want about, I don't know, maybe, uh, what would you say, two foot max, 24 inches. Okay, okay, but again, give yourself a little bit of uh, a little bit more for, of course, your tying on and uh, the knotless knot for this rig. I think that should do about do it. Yes, that's going to do it, mate. So I'll take your wire, nice little cut there, cracking little wire cutters. Then I think they were 50B on a car boot, so that's not to be sniffed at. So there we go, I've got my wire trace, 
Next thing we're going to need, of course, is a hook. So the end hook goes on first. So basically, uh, the last hook. Yeah, there's going to be three hooks, two trebles, and a single on this. So first thing, of course, I'm going to get the correct crimps I need for this. They are too big. Yeah. So what I'm looking at here is these are 1.35 mil. 1.35 mil and got 1.2. Uh, yeah, 1.2, 1 1.35. That's it. Bore on those. So I'm going to slide it on. Again, this is all dead fiddly, here, especially when you're trying to do it on the, for the video. So we'll slide on there. And then, of course, I'm going to slide my hook over the end. And then back through. Right, coming down there for this, otherwise I'll be there for having a day. Right, so there's the first one, of course that's going to get crimped up. Yeah, so it's just slightly tag end through there, slightly, but uh, I like to leave it loose like that. That's my personal preference. Okay, then I'm going to get a bit of shrink tube and just enough to cover the crimp. So I'll get me nice thin stuff. Again, there's a load in here. I'm just going to cut a bit off there. Yeah, get it from the electrical shops. Yeah, it's uh, it's dirt cheap. You can get a meter for you know probably about fifty p or something like that. I don't know. Uh, right, so I'm going to cut. I don't know about an inch off there. Slide that on. So I'm going to just slide that over the wire trace, and then that can come down very shortly once I've crimped it. So I'll get me 10 bob crimps, 10 bob millionaire, and what I do here is I'll just keep that little loop on the end there, and I'll just crimp it on about seven times, not going through too tight, otherwise Go through the wire and we don't want that so it's just basically trapping the wire in the crimp right. so that crimp's on now as you can see well, I hope you can see if that focuses focus okay and then the slide We shrink tube over the top of that. Then, of course, because it's wire, you don't need to steam this, you can actually use a lighter, which is what I use. But I haven't got one out. So, in there, grab one, back in two shakes of a donkey's dick. That's what got me a little lighter. I'm just going to shrink that. Just not hold it on it, it'll just burn it, just go under it with the, with the flame from side to side. Okey dokey. There we go, that's one end done. Next thing, of course, is the second treble. Slide this on, and of course, depending on the size of your dead bait, is however far you want them apart. Okay. So the first one will probably sit just behind the gills uh, of the dead bait and the other one like three quarters of the way along towards its tail. Yeah. Or the other way around depending on what you're doing. So what I'm going to do now is basically I come back on myself and this is your first knotless knot. And I wind it round the shank of the treble and then back through the eye as you would do normally with a knotless knot. But again try and get this through carefully otherwise it might kink. Once it's kinked it's daffy ducked. There we go. Right so 
that's basically not what's knotted on there. And over the top of that is another piece of shrink. So of course this is going to be a larger ball shrink too because it's got to go over the eye of the hook. So that's probably about the right size for that. So what I want is basically the shank of a hook plus a few mil. I shrink to just tie these everything up and there we go. So again with lighter, just give it a quick shrink down. the two trebles done yep. and now for the single I would use bigger ones but I don't think I've got any it's not as big as the macro folks but not as small as these uh, Right, so for the single hook, what I've what I normally use is these, these look like, I think they're all shawn, I see, whatever it's called, them sea fishing hooks, I don't know what size they are, but they're not very big, yeah, but they are smaller than the mackerel hook, okay, right, so what we do there is, this is where it comes to, uh, knotless knot, hair rig, basically, this is, so when you get these, make sure you've got enough uh, you've got enough room or you've got a big enough eye to get the of course to get the line or in this case the trace wire through twice. So what I do with this one, that one goes just up from here. This is going in the tail of the fish. Yeah, so that's going in the tail of the fish. Yeah, or if it was trolling, or if you were sink and draw, that would go in the mouth, yeah, through the lips. Okay, so basically that is now a knotless knot. One, two, three, four, five. Okie dokie, just tighten everything up there. And then it just goes back through the eye of the hook. I can do it because holding that up like that, between my ways, I've opened that up now. That's frayed at the end now, so I'm going to have a bloody job getting that through. So I'm just going to snip that off just to take all that crap off. I'll get that in my feet later now. It's shot off somewhere. Again, not looks not tightened down. So what I'm going to do with that now, I'm going to make sure that's in line with the shank. So another little bit of shrink tube. Slide that on over the high of that single hook. down the shank of the single hook like so so let's give that a quick zap there you go and then another bit of shrink tube the same diameter over the eye of the hook. So 
so that goes over there right the hook and again just a quick blast on the old uh, lighter so there we go that's the basically the rig there so firstly what I do of course I'm going to hook that through the tail of the fish I'll go and get a dead bait out of the freezer and show you how I do that that hooks through the side, of, uh, the tail of the fish. So when you cast, yeah, all the weight, all the pressure, yeah, the force of the cast is on that hook, and not the two trebles, because you've probably done it in the past. Yet yeah, because the mount goes flying off, so that's to take the weight, basically, and the force of the cast. Next one, of course, I am going to put another 1.35 millimeter. Good. I have to get under the light here. Then your chosen swivel. In fact, I'm going to put a little bit more shrink tube on there first. Oh. Bollocks, you dropped it. Well, that'll do. I'll use that in instead. Okay, the swivel. Drop me. No, that's all right. In fact, shrink tube. Sorry, my mistake. Your fault. Swivel. Oh, oh, A little bit tangled up. That's super sharp hooks. These. I just hope they don't, uh, they don't straighten out or snap. Right, so back through, of course, with the the tag in through the crimp. Let's have a quick check of that. Just the tag in poking through. Then, of course, we're going to crimp that up with my little. 10 bob groups. There we go. Then over with the uh, rig sleeve or the crimp sleeve or whatever you want to call it, but in this case it's shrink tube of course. Fire that up. Treble, treble, single, and of course you swivel at the end. So what I'll do, I'll just go and get a, uh, a dead bait, uh, connect it on, hook it in, and uh, show you how it sits. Tips, tricks, and hints, happy days, dog's bollocks, back of the onion bag. Right, so I've got myself a dead bait. Of course, that's a little herring there. Yeah, best place to get dead baits if uh, if you're looking for them, lads. Of course, apart from the tackle shop, Morrison's is uh, the place I like. The fish stall at Morrison's. You get some good. Uh, you get herring there. You can get mackerel, sardines. Okay, so this is the one. There's the hook. Of course, with uh, with with soft baits like herring and sardines, where they've got really soft skin. This is what I use them for, then I can give it a good chuck without it flying off and the hooks just rip out of your skin and that's it, yeah. Your lead and hooks go one way, yeah, and your dead bait goes flying off in the opposite direction. So again, this one, um, is, this is frozen solid like, so I'm just going to nick it in. So that one's going in the tail of the hook, that's the single, and then you just nick, just nick the barb, uh, Barb ends of the other hooks. In like so. So as you can see, it's that single hook that takes the force of the cast. Okay, okay. And again, this is just my personal uh, rigs. These that I use, I've never had any problems with them. Yeah. 
okay you might not want to use them but then again it's just a guide it's just tips tricks and handy hints yeah there's no pike fishing rule book that says you can't do that but of course uh, lots of people on tinter web yeah like to troll about don't they and say oh you can't use that it's a load of shite this that and the other well maybe it is we don't use it then all right super yeah of course so there we go basically to take the force of the hook sorry the force of the cast might mistake your fault okay when you're lobbing it out then of course if you're trolling yeah or sink and draw what I do is I put the hook through the lips again I probably use a mackerel hook for this and then of course what else I would do I would make the distance between the hooks a little bit longer because you can see that sat down that end of the fish but again this is for a dead bait coming down the tail and the two sat in the side so again as it comes along you troll in or you sink and draw that hook keeps it in line if you haven't got that then you quite easily pull out and you've lost your dead bait and again you go through loads of dead baits yeah. so again trolling it keeps it in a straight line but with trolling that would be replaced for a ball bearing swivel yeah otherwise you have more tangles than a whole herd of tangly things beginning with t so again and it goes through the water yeah quite straight but again if that wasn't there and you've just got those two in it tends to veer off to one side yeah and get all over the place then super Right, so tips, tricks and handy hints, there we go. With that rig as well, of course if I was trolling and the likes of, I'd be using the uh, plastic coating, but I would also, might jazz it up a bit as well, with yeah, a few beads, a few floral beads at the end, well, basically where that sits, is up against the hook on the, on the trace, okay, with, I don't know, five, about five beads on there. And then some uh, some spinner blades with the cleats or whatever they're called there. Yeah, and if you're trolling or uh, sink and draw, of course as you pull it, yeah, the old uh, the old spinner blade goes round for that little bit of added extra attraction. So that's it. I'm going to knock up a few more of them now because uh, I'll be using them at the weekend with uh, big carp camel colossus close to me bag. Uh, and no doubt he will say oh they look good could I have one of them and then I've already got him a load uh, ready to go yeah because that's the kind of guy I'm give him a load of rigs then of course what I'm going to store them in is my little uh, snooze tubs that's these little snooze tubs all the way from area, which is Sweden of course Oh, that's a bit minging that one. There's a couple in there. So again, wash them out, and then of course I loop them up and I'll stick them in there and I'll write in gold or silver pen. What's actually in there? I've got some knocked up in here. In here, yeah, shot off there like a third of a thousand gazelles. Uh, just for purposes, look so. Here you go, different colours here. That one's actually got wire spinning traces, 25 pound. Probably hasn't all been used. Okay. Uh, another example would be what are these in here? Dead bait trolling rigs, size four, two times treble, one large single. So that's one of those I've just made for trolling. Again, it's got the mackerel hook on there, as you see. It's got the two trebles, it must be about size size eight, size six. And of course, they go in there. Plastic, waterproof, unbreakable. And there you go in my Nashi rig pouch. Yep. All my uh, all my pipe rigs are in there. Happy days. Tips, tricks and handy ends. And hopefully we'll get some on Saturday. Sunday. If not, doesn't matter, does it? Because we'll have a good time anyway. Right. Wait, kids. We'll put these back in the freezer.
Right, so there's the rigs, and uh, unbelievably, yeah. How come I've got 3,000 subscribers? We've gone over the 3,000 subscribers mark. Not that I do it for subscribers, not that I do it for anything really, but I enjoy myself when I do them. Okay, yeah, so a little video diary. So years to come, I can look back and go, oh yeah, that a blank there, oh yeah, a blank there, oh yeah, caught a duck there, oh yeah. Oh, there's another couple of ducks there. Oh, I had a fish. Bloody hell, look at this. Come have a look at this, lads. I got a fish. I'll have a video with a fish on. Yeah. Anyway, so as we say, yeah, man cave's up and running now, so plenty more videos to come over the winter. Uh, from what I can think about, what I can do, lots of lead stuff because uh, I do like making my leads, uh, boilies, baits, and things like that. I'll just have to get a bigger freezer for them because not much room left in that one now with all these little bad boys. But again, it's my little winter stock, little winter stock of fish there. Right, that's it kids, yeah, plenty more videos on the way, uh, and of course we've got that little piking session this weekend up in uh, sunny Doncaster, or thereabouts, yeah, right, that's it, see you on the flip side, back to the onion bag.